Hi, welcome back to Birding with Bingham. So um, today we're gonna do a we're gonna do the challenge right at the beginning. So the challenge is gonna be to identify some birds by call, and they're all birds that we have um, heard of that we've heard the calls before. So um, I'm gonna give you six different calls, and I want you to try to identify as many as you can, and send me your um, send me your best guesses. Uh, you can go back and watch the previous videos if you've forgotten some of them. They're all ones that came from the last three videos where we learned different bird calls. So after we identify bird call, or after you get a, your quiz of identifying birds by call, we will then have um, the, the uh, that we're going to practice identifying owls today. We're going to talk about owls. So first the ID, call ID, and then um, identifying some, some owls. Cash Valley Owls. So here are the calls. Um, I'm going to play them on my cell phone so that you can't see what the birds are. Um, and then I'm going to see how many of you can correctly how many you can correctly identify. You can email me your responses. Okay, here is the first song that you need to try to correctly identify. Um, this is the same type of bird, but a different version of the same song. So that's the first bird. Um, here is the second bird. All right, second bird. Here we go. I'm trying not to tip my phone so you can't, I, I don't want you to see the name of the bird that's written on my phone, but uh, um, this is a pair of that same bird. Okay, so that's your second, second one. Here is the third bird. Okay, third bird, here it is. Another version of the same bird. And here is bird number four. Uh, here's another version of the same bird. Okay, bird number five. Let's see, here's bird number five. And bird number six. Okay, this is the final bird, bird number six. One more version of the same bird. OK, 
Okay, those are your six birds. So try to identify as many as you can. If no one gets them all correct, we'll go with whoever gets the most correct. So I, try to correctly identify as many as you can. All right, um, let's go ahead and move into, um, let's go ahead and, and talk about owls. So these are the different owls of Cache County. Um, I put these owls in here so that um, because you know it's getting to be that time of year where <clears throat> where you can start listening for owls um, in the spring. The owls start calling and you'll start hearing them. Uh, owls are ones that you're more often to you're more likely to hear than to see. So we're going to look and listen to both out to all the owls. This is every owl you might see in Cache County, um, starting with this guy, which is the most likely, the most common owl. So the great horned owl is the most common owl that we have. Um, these are the ones you're most likely to see sitting up in trees. They're obvious because they're huge. Um, they're 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 big. These are they're sometimes called the tiger of the skies. In fact, they do eat other owls and um, other things as well. They they look at those huge talons. These things are monsters. They're gigantic. Um, and right now, the great horned owls are starting to pair off. Uh, it's mating season for the great horned owls. So you'll see them starting to pair off. You'll see them in groups of two starting to look for nests. Um, and they, if you know a spot where they've nested in the past, it's a good spot to watch for them to return to nest um, in a following year. They're, they're, um, they're often you can find them during the daytime because, like I say, you look in the trees for a big clump. So that's a great horned owl. Um, I will play the call of a great horned owl because, again, a lot of these owls, you're more likely to hear them than to see them. And so I'll play the calls of them so you can hear so you can hear what they um, what they sound like. Let's see. Let me find the great horned owl. All right. So here's a great horned owl. Um, they're kind of the typical owl sound. They're the hooting owl. So this is what the great horned owl sounds like. <coughs> Um, that one's pretty quiet. Let me try and see if this other one, this is a pair, so two, male and female. Let's see if that's louder. Absolutely beautiful sound, um, kind of haunting when you hear it at night, but really pretty, um, really awesome owl. Now the great horned owl can be mistaken for the um, the long-eared owl, this little guy here. Uh, the long eared owl, I, the way I remember the difference is the way that they look, their expression, because they look very similar when you're looking at them. The long-eared owl is a little smaller, it's much smaller actually. Um, but to me, the long-eared owl looks shocked or surprised, um, and the great horned owl looks more commanding. It looks like he's in charge, like, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Uh, the long-eared owl looks more like, whoa, what just happened? Um, uh, so if you look at their expression, that can kind of give them away. Also, the great horned owl, like I said, is huge. It looks fat. It's big. This is a big owl. Um, long-eared owls are more slender, skinny, tiny owls. They're small. Uh, the, the one time I came across someone who had found a uh, long-eared owl pair, uh, they said there's a pair of, there's some, some baby great horned owls over there, and they do look a little like baby great horned owls. Um, so don't be confused by the long-eared owl. It might look like a great horned owl, but it's much smaller. Also, long-eared owls tend to hang out in um, brush, areas of thick, where it's really thick brush. Um, great horned owls are usually more like up in the trees. Um, they're, they're not usually down in the brushy areas as much. And these guys actually nest on the ground. And so if you're walking along, you might spook them up. Um, they'll fly up in front of you and kind of scare you sometimes. Um, long-eared owls. Here's a long-eared owl sound. <coughs> 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 I'm hoping you can hear that. Um, I've never actually heard a long-eared owl. I've only seen them. So, but they, but they do have kind of a, just a, whoo, they, they kind of have a, a single note that they, that they do. Uh, I'm coming to the third owl, and I, and I'm, I'm helping you identify owls by how they look. 
So, so this one looks commanding. It's a, it's the great horned owl. If you look at this one's face, it to me looks surprised. Um, that's the long-eared owl. The, the barn owl to me just looks innocent, like pure. I don't know how to describe it. This, their, their heart-shaped face, and then they have black eyes. Um, so their heart-shaped face and black eyes, their, their feathers can vary from like very light white to um, all the way down to dark brown. So don't judge by their color, um, but this face, this heart-shaped face is very distinctive of the barn owl. Um, and these are ones that usually, they're called barn owls because you're likely to find them hanging out in a barn. Um, that's where they like to go. So, so if you know of someone or if you know of a barn in the valley, that's a great place to watch for or look for these barn owls, especially at this time of year. They also like to hang out where there's a bunch of hay stacks. A lot of times they'll, they'll um, hang out in the hay. And they have a, they have a very haunting um, call. They, they, they're more of a scream. This is how their call sounds. So if you're out at night and you hear that and it sounds like a, a high-pitched scream almost, um, uh, you might be hearing a barn owl. Uh, the next one is a screech owl. Now to me, screech owls look angry. Um, they're cute. They're tiny. Screech owls are like, you know, barn owls are bigger and, the, and you'll see them like in barn screech owls, they're like this big. And you'll see them sitting a lot of times in a tree just like this, in the hole of a tree. So if you, if you go past an area where there's trees with like cavities or holes in them, watch for a little screech owl, a little western screech owl to be hanging out in those cavities of the trees. Um, they're usually pretty reliable once you find a tree that has a screech owl in it. Oftentimes you can find them there every night. They like to hang out in the same basic spots. Here's the song of a screech owl. Um, I've heard it described as a ball that's bouncing and it kind of starts out bouncing high and then it gets closer to the ground. So it's like boop, 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 um, as it gets closer and closer to the ground. So another song of a screech owl. <laughs> You'll notice most of the owls don't say who. They don't say who, who, like we think owls say. That's probably the great horned owl who says that. But uh, most of these owls don't say anything like that. The short-eared owl is one of the daytime owls you might see. Um, they can be out and around about during the day um, or active at day sometimes. Um, I, I, look, I always think they look tired because they always have these black patches around their eyes. They have a flat facial disc as well like owls tend to have, but they have these black patches around their eyes. When they're in flight, you can watch for these commas on their wings. That's a good way to help identify them. But these, like I say, they, they just look tired to me because they, they you know they look like they have the raccoon eyes because they have these black patches around their eyes so that's a short-eared owl they call them short-eared owls because they do have little ear tufts but they're tiny and they're usually not poking up not like the long-eared owl or the great horned owl um, these ones are very different so let's listen to a short-eared owl they sound almost like a cat to me Um, so that's a short-eared owl. Um, another valley owl is the northern pygmy owl. These guys look vicious to me even though they're tiny. They're like this big. Um, they're like the size of a mouse almost. Uh, when you see them with a mouse, they're, it looks like you, know, you can't believe that they caught the mouse because they're so tiny. Um, northern pygmy owls, they make a note that they repeat. It sounds like this. So that's a northern pygmy owl, vicious little face. I mean, they look vicious to me. These guys look tired. These guys look angry. Um, these guys just look vicious. They have these bright yellow eyes, and you can see their eyebrows coming up like this. Um, the flammulated owl, to me, looks a little clueless. They always look like they're kind of just staring off into space with no nothing on their mind. You know, they have these black eyes, and to me, that makes it look almost like you know, it looks almost like they're just kind of staring off into space. So a flammulated owl is one that, um, that, that we have in the spring that should start to be showing up soon. 
And flammulated owl is another tiny owl, but it's kind of a weird one because flammulated owls do sound a little bit like um, great horned owls, uh, just a little different pitch. So. <laughs> They do hoot, kind of. So they sound a little bit like, you know, they almost have a hoot sound. Very deep for such a tiny body. These guys, the northern sawwit owl, they look amazed. They look like they're just like, they just heard something amazing. Um, they have this big facial disc and big eyes. And so they, they, they just, I mean, they're, they always look like they're just amazed to me. Um... And northern sawwit owls are they're they're another one that's great to listen for as you go up in the canyons. Um, they're common up in the canyons. So here's their I'm gonna do their their toot series. It's called that their their hoots and then their call as well. So that's their toot series or their, their hoots, um, but they also have a really cool call that sounds like a scream almost. So those are pretty much the owls of Cache Valley. Now those are the ones that you could see or hear. Um, now this one is super rare, but it has been seen in Cache Valley before, the burrowing owl. So I decided to include it in, include it in the list. We're not going to do the call for it because I've never heard these call before. Um, these ones live on the ground. They live in burrows. Um, they live in communities usually with big groups of them. And I call this one the teacher face owl because it looks like it's about to scold a student or something, the teacher face owl. Uh, long legs. They spend, they spend a lot more time walking along the ground than they do flying. Uh, so going back through these, this one's quite rare, not likely to see. Um, Northern sawwit owl has the amazed look um, and has the uh, the high pitched uh, call um, that sounds like someone screaming. Uh, flammulated owl is kind of that clueless look. The uh, northern pygmy owl is the fierce or vicious look, and then the tired one is the short-eared owl with no ear tufts. Um, uh, the angry one is the screech owl, western screech owl, and it's it's small, it's tiny, but, but angry looking. Uh, this one with its with its um, facial disc and dark eyes to me just looks like innocent, like I didn't do it. Um, so the long-eared owl is that surprised look on its face, and then the great horned owl has that commanding, fierce look on its face, the commanding look. So those are the owls of Cache Valley. Those are the ones that you're likely to see um, or hear as you're out and about. Uh, it's a great time to start listening for them because it is starting to come on to uh, mating season. So they're going to start calling and defending their territory and things like that. So listen for them as you're out and about. Good luck. And let me know if you hear anything. And send me your answers to the challenge. We'll see you next time in Birding with Bingham.